Comrade Legasov. Time is 38 past midnight. The reactor is nearly shut down. The operators of Reactor 4 are locked on a path that leads directly to disaster. There's no way to turn back. They do not yet know it, but the die is cast. At 30 megawatts, Xenon is still being created, but none of it is burning away. The reactor is drowning in poison. To make matters worse, the reactor isn't hot enough to produce sufficient steam. The only way to safely raise power from this state is to do it very, very slowly over the course of 24 hours. But the Atlov wants it done now. Akimov and Toptonov have only one course of action. They begin pulling control rods out, dozens at a time, halfway out, three quarters of the way out. Still, the power does not budge. The reaction in the core, which had been rising, skyrockets. Every last molecule of liquid water instantly converts to steam, which expands and ruptures a series of fuel rod channels. The control rods in those channels can move no further. The graphite tips are fixed in position, endlessly accelerating the reaction. Chernobyl Reactor 4 is now a nuclear bomb. 123.42. Perovozchenko looks down on the enormous steel lid of the reactor and sees the impossible. The control rod and fuel channel caps, which each weigh 350 kilograms, are jumping up and down. He runs to warn the control room, but there's nothing he can do to stop what is coming. 1.23 and 44 seconds. The steam blows more fuel channels apart. We do not know how high the power went. We only know the final reading. Reactor 4, designed to operate at 3,200 megawatts, went beyond 33,000. The pressure inside the core can no longer be held back. At long last, we have arrived. 123.45, explosion. In the instant the lid is thrown off the reactor, oxygen rushes in. Combined with hydrogen and superheated graphite. The chain of disaster is now complete. the only one who kept the secrets. There are many who are following orders from the KGB, from the Central Committee, and right now there are 16 reactors in the Soviet Union with the same fatal flaw. Three of them are still running, less than 20 kilometers away at Chernobyl. Professor Legasov, if you mean to suggest the Soviet state is somehow responsible for what happened, then I must warn you, you are treading on dangerous ground. I've already trod on dangerous ground. We're on dangerous ground right now because of our secrets and our lies. They're practically what define us. When the truth offends, we lie and lie until we can no longer remember it. It's even there, but it is still there. 
Every lie you tell incurs a debt to the truth. Sooner or later that debt is paid. That is how an RBMK reactor core explodes. Lies.